Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of HVAC Education Hub channel. What is defrost? How heat pump is doing defrost? And what is the main thing to remember about defrost in your heat pump system? So what is defrost? Uh, you will hear uh, a lot of um, opinions, a lot of explanations of defrost, what is defrost, and why heat pump is going into defrost. So, if you have boiler, your boiler is inside of the house, you have gas, chimney, and so on. Basically, temperature is inside the same, and you don't need to take care about defrost. But what is about heat pump? So heat pump, we have outdoor unit, which is our heat exchanger, and we are stealing the heat from the air to heat our house. And we have one component here. We have our air, which is full of the water or moisture. So basically when dew point is around some value we will have ice build up on our heat exchanger it will usually be around zero degrees when really high humidity is in the outdoor air but depending on the region on the country on the city but always we will, we have some humidity in the air and when this humidity is so high and when we are extracting this heat or cooling our outer unit, we have ice build up on uh, our evaporator. So we need to remove this ice. At that point, we are starting to do defrost cycle. The main component in heat pump for defrost cycle is four-way valve. What is four-way valve doing? We have heating in our uh, house, domestic hot water or heating through the underfloor or radiators. And in some point, when ice is built up, our four-way valve is switching this and our unit is going into cooling mode. What it means? It means that now our evaporator is inside and our condenser is outside. So we need to heat up our outer unit and we need to change direction of the refrigerant so we could remove this ice. And this process could take a few minutes, more than a few minutes, depending on the few, few factors. One of the most important factors is volume of the water, volume of the water in our system, let's say in liters. What it means that this is critical volume, which we have available to heat up our outer unit. For example, if we have open system, or buffer or whatever we have and we have 100 liters we could use all of these 100 liters to heat up our outer unit and you will know that this amount of energy could do a process in some amount of time but if we have some thermostats somewhere in some rooms or in another rooms or in all rooms and we have for example 20 liters of water available for defrost this is less energy and we will probably need more time to remove our ice also depending how much ice is built up what is the software and so on but we need volume this is why it's important to have as much volume as you can if you don't have open loop if you have some thermostat somewhere it is good to put volumizer you can check videos about this topic but basically we need to ensure that in most critical position for example if all zones are closed if we have zones we need to have available some amount of volume panasonic said for smaller units minimum 30 liters for bigger units minimum 50 liters so 50 liters available for defrost this is first and most important uh, factor another one is thermoregulation what it means that it's not the same if you have thermostats and you are going on and off and your compressor is going on high frequency and low frequency and then again on high 
or if you have some stable conditions. Why? If you have stable conditions, you will have modulation in your house and your eyes uh, will not build up so fast. How? Because our fan is not uh, removing heat from the air so fast, we are in stable conditions and you will have usually less defrost cycles. In other hand, if we have, if you turn off our system, in that case, our system will cool down. And then if we want to start up again, we need to start up on high frequency and then fan will, fan will start on high RPMs and our, our ice, if humidity is high, will build up uh, more frequently. And the last point is software. Depending on the manufacturer, depending on the algorithm, software is deciding what is the time to do defrost cycle. For example, if an outer sensor drops below a certain point, start defrost cycle, and at that point, cycle must last for some amount of time. This is explanation. I will just show you two examples and explain two examples. One is underfloor heating. 12 kilowatt unit with around 250 liters of water, so all under for heating. In that case, we have and we have really high humidity in that house. We have defrost cycle for around 10 minutes, and our temperature drop is from 30 degrees to 25 degrees. So we need to cool down our water in the system to use this energy for outer unit and then after 10 minutes this 25 is again on 30 so this customer doesn't even know that the flow cycle is in the system this is because we have huge volume of the water some recommendation is minimum 10 liters per kilowatt but i will say at least 20 liters per kilowatt if you ensure you will be you will be always on the safe side Another example is a radiator. So we have radiator. It's not the problem that this is radiator, but it's on fixed flow. So fixed, always 50 degrees. And this system has different cycles really frequently. Why? Because our compressor is going high, our fan is going high, and then we have ice. Then we have turned off, off, and again on we are fast we have fast moving of compressor and fan we have fast ice build up and in that case different cycles are more frequent because we are doing like uh, on and off with really high temperature for this temperature for example you need i don't know 35 bar of r32 and here uh, you need probably 21 bar so you can imagine like if you are driving car on 60 kilometers per hour or 150 you will spend more fuel on 150 and you cannot break down so fast like you can with 60 kilometers per hour this is about defrost so volume is really important thermoregulation is important and basically how you will drive your system if you drive your system slowly for long period of time you will have better efficiency for some people, this is counterintuitive because they think, okay, we can turn off the system, we will reduce our energy consumption, but at the end, you will spend more consumption, even on electricity from compressor, but also on different cycles, switching the points, cooling the water, then heat up again, depending on the system. But basically, if you follow point one and two, point three, you cannot choose because this is a manufacturer but point one and two software will take care of your different cycle thanks for watching follow me on linkedin where i post regularly weekly newsletter every wednesday newsletter about heating systems heat pumps actual discussions and here on youtube see you in next episode